For a long time, humans could only travel as far as our feet would take us. In other words, slowly. Eventually, we got help from animals and the wind. Then engines brought us trains, automobiles, planes and boats without sails and everything in between. Boat car anyone? However, most engines burn fossil fuels which produce greenhouse gas emissions. And greenhouse gases are warming up the planet to dangerous levels. Transportation accounts for 27% of greenhouse gas emissions in the UK. So getting to net zero will require big changes to transport, whether by sea, air or land. From vacuums to vaccines, ships move so many of the goods we depend on. Ships with battery-powered electric engines are currently making short voyages. While hybrid engines, powered by a combination of batteries and fuel, are beginning to enable longer ones. But in the near future, the biggest impact will come from transitioning to new fuels. There are many available, and they all have different pros and cons. Some are cleaner, some are easier or cheaper to adopt, and some are safer to handle and store. Depending on the size of the ship, geography and cost, all options will be considered to help reduce emissions. The future of air travel may include flying cars, air taxis and automated drone delivery. But for now, planes remain the first choice. New materials and technologies can help reduce emissions through fuel savings like the Ultrafan from Rolls-Royce, which is larger and more efficient than previous engines, while also lighter, resulting in huge fuel savings. Electric engines will help too, and are already powering small aircraft, with many companies working to bring electric power to larger aircraft, capable of longer journeys with more passengers or cargo. But for now, low carbon fuels, such as biofuels, hydrogen and synthetic options play a part in the solution for reaching net zero. Previously, most automotive engines depended on combustion of fossil fuels, which generates greenhouse emissions. Not good. But hybrid vehicles produce lower emissions from their tailpipes, and electric vehicles, or EVs, produce none. EVs use the same source of power as your kettle. But whereas your kettle uses the power immediately, EVs store the energy to use later. Essentially, they're battery powered. And unlike traditional vehicles, EVs can use the vehicle's kinetic energy through regenerative braking to make them even more efficient. Hydrogen fuel cells already play a role in all of these types of transport as well, alongside batteries. And future innovations in these energy sources could mean they produce more power, making it possible for even long-haul lorries to be powered by electricity. Other developments, like the move away from car ownership towards sharing services, ultra-high-speed rail and automated vehicles will all help reduce emissions. While the future of transport gives us a lot to be hopeful for, Governments, organisations and individuals will all have to continue working hard to research and develop new technologies and create new infrastructure, like rolling out charging points for electric vehicles or hydrogen refuelling stations for larger forms of transport, expanding vehicle-to-grid technology, which allows EV batteries to return energy to the grid at peak times, and building pipelines that can deliver hydrogen from where it's produced to where it's needed. We must also work to ensure that access to new technologies is fair and equitable, so that they're available to everyone. And finally, we must create more and more of our energy through renewable and other zero carbon sources. Doing that will help us get to net zero.